Our next guest is no stranger to the sacrifice our nation's military families make each and every day. Harris Faulkner is an Emmy Award-winning news anchor of Outnumbered Overtime with Harris Faulkner and co-host of the talk show Outnumbered. She also is the daughter of a decorated career Army officer who served three tours in Vietnam and knows what it's like for a family who serves. In her new book, Nine Rules of Engagement, a military brat's guide to life and success, she shares the lessons she learned growing up in a military family while playing homage to the military ideals that shaped her and shows how everyone can benefit from bringing the wisdom of military service into their lives. There's no doubt these formative lessons in leadership and worth ethics became the guiding principles for her career as a journalist. Lessons she creates with her rise to becoming one of the top executive hosts on Fox News. Harris will be signing copies of her new book at the First Timers booth immediately after today's sessions. So be sure to stop by. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Harris Faulkner. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, wow. It is good to be home. Thank you. Thank you very much. And when I say it's good to be home, I mean it on a couple of different fronts. First of all, my biggest days up until now in television news happened right here in Kansas City with a Fox station, WDAF Channel 4. I uh, hadn't done much in the business yet, and eight years later, there wasn't much that I wasn't willing to try. This town helped so much in my development and my respect uh, as a human being and as an Army brat. I'm also home because I'm with you. And my military pilot dad taught me that, Harris Kimberly, you must be aware of who you are and whose you are. I belong to this veteran family. And let me tell you a little bit about what you all put into the bloodstream of America that I write about in my book so that no one misses it, particularly those civilians, because they need the stuff that you taught us and continue to teach us. The number one lesson in every battle in life, and boy, don't we face them, whether it's on the battlefield, at the hospital, in our relationships, losing, gaining jobs, change all around us, as human beings, in every battle in life, there are two rivals, belief and doubt. Doubt has a bigger team. And as veterans, I know you know that. Belief is often outnumbered, but it's never outworked. That's who you are. And that's who I want to tell everybody about. It's so important. I loved it when I walked in this morning and I saw you doing the, the roll count, that the shout outs to each, the leadership in each state. And I realized that I'm an, a military brat because I could cheer for several states. <laughs> I didn't actually really have a dedicated one. I know the state of New Jersey would be disappointed to hear that, but I mean, we traveled a lot. You know how it is. And so I'm from the nation of America. And we have just a few states that we recognize, but we're to in this thing together. You know, the other thing that growing up military taught me, and that I know that you helped in your generations of fighting to instill in all of us is, all politics aside, we are patriots. No matter what. We are one. And you know, my dad used to tell me when I was growing up that when he was coming back at, from war, although I was too little probably to do anything other than be hoisted up in my mom's arms to look out for dad, my dad said that on the way, on that long journey home, he would triple and quadruple spit shine his shoes so that when he walked across the tarmac, my mom would recognize his boots. <laughs> and I laugh about that now, just like you do. 
But it is our identity together. It's what yokes us. We are special, and we do have the best, shiniest shoes on the planet. I want to get serious now about a message that I'm taking across America, and I hope you'll help me carry it. First of all, a presidential tweet can change your life. I didn't know my book would get one until it happened. And then it was like more responsibility from the commander in chief to make sure I got my message out. We do nothing. We do nothing well. We complete nothing. We go forward zero steps without our military. Yes, don't be shy. You keep us free, you keep us safe, and you keep us focused on what is important. Sacrifice and survival. Survival is not overrated. You give us that. You're a constant reminder of what that is. So thank you very much. So the message is now in nine rules of engagement have to do with what we know to be true in the military. We don't cut and run. In fact, when it gets tough, we're the people that are rushing in and everybody else is going, where are they going? They're rushing past us to get out. We are the tough stuff. And we do it with love. In my book, I talk about those times when my dad served and he had taken hits in his fighter plane and how he would have to dig deeper then at that moment to come up with, okay, now I know I had a contingency plan because in the military, what do we do? We stay ready so we don't have to get ready. Say it with me, stay ready so we don't have to get ready. We're on it. In fact, sometimes our plan B is so good, most people would write it down first. The other one they wouldn't have even thought of. And I love telling young people about the legacy among us and how if we just meet a veteran and put the phone down, how truly our lives can change. Please applaud for that. I'm excited that you gather and you celebrate each other, but I'm also excited to be given by the good Lord above a platform to spread the word that you're doing it. It's important. I don't want anybody to miss it. We have so many men and women who give their daily lives in sacrifice to be away from home, their families, as my dad did. And the entire family serves. And our communities need to know who's among them. The heroes on the battlefield and the heroes on the home front. Yes. Absolutely. My mom was one of those heroes. You know, she said, Harris Kimberly, the bar is high for you and your friends on post because the world is watching us. We're on the nightly news via the loved ones. My dad's war was Vietnam. And while it may not have been celebrated, those very same people who served in that war, and I just met a gentleman today who said it was because of the Vietnam vets that there were parades for those who were returning from Desert Storm. Can I get an amen? That's what we do. Our warriors fight and then they create legacy of respect, of integrity, of appreciation. They continue to be our heroes at home and abroad. Wow, what a, what, what a blessing for America. We are so grateful for your service and we need you today more than ever. We need you to help me to get those young people to look up from their social media and to find out where the real words that can help them win come from.
Things like recruit your special forces. Oh, I want to get this into people so badly because as I look out at all these faces, those who are here to support and those who have served as one big family, I realize that who we are with matters. Scientifically, we become most like the five people we spend most of our time with. The military gets this. That's why they don't send 250 people on a SEAL or Special Forces Beret mission. They don't need 250 people. They just need a couple dozen who can really get it done. That's what we all need in our lives. I'm telling people to look to the military past and present for how to win. We don't go into battle with, with the idea that, well, you know, we might have to come back with this with a, with a good reason why it didn't happen. I, have you ever heard, first of all, you can't cut a general off because he's not going to let you get that sentence in. Or as my dad, a colonel, they're not going to let you get that in, that negative. No, 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 no. In fact, don't just go stand over there. Take a walk down the hall. We need all the people who believe. Because remember, doubt has a bigger team. People can be heading to a fire with a hose and still doubt if they can get water on it. Not the military. Heck, they can go with a cup and a Q-tip and put it out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now I'm just preaching. <laughs> but it's so true. And the responsibility that I feel with the platform that I've been given at, oh, I don't think you mentioned, I work at Fox News. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah. Oh. Okay, good. <laughs> That's where you find those outnumbered shows. <laughs> but you know, I, I made choices early in my career, as early as in Kansas City, my husband says before the dawn of age, because he thinks no life happened before I met him. <laughs> you know, we were still creating things like the wheel. And then came along Tony, and suddenly everything was Pillsbury and dough. <laughs> but you know, back in those days, I would talk to my parents on a daily basis. I was covering bigger stories than ever before, and I was worried that I might make a mistake. And my mom said, no, 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 my child. Just keep at it. Remember who you are and becoming and whose you are, where you come from. You have the stuff that makes sure that you only know what victory feels like. It may not be the victory that you planned, and it may not go exactly the, the mission that you devised along those lines, but the military has instilled in you the belief that you can get there. And there will be important, and there will be worthy of your effort. The military teaches us to surround ourselves with great people and not to settle. Absolutely. So what I tell people is, look at your squad. There may be some people you might have to fire. The military will look and it will say, okay, you're not quite for this mission. I may have a place for you, but not this mission. That's what I tell people to do their, in their own lives. I'm raising children with that husband I talked about, two daughters, nine and 11. That 11-year-old 11 is a bit fresh, like broccoli. <laughs> so I'm sometimes challenged, but I know that I can get to victory <laughs> with her too. But we do have challenges. We have challenges as a nation. We have people now who can help us to get the job done, and we need to make sure that they know we've got their back, no matter who they are, where they come from. You know, I always liken this to when my mom was stateside, my dad was serving, she would give me a mission in the house, housework to do. And what she was trying to do was create space for me to stay away from the people who were not supposed to be in my inner circle, what she used to call the fast girls. Anybody of the generation where the word fast means something other than for a car? <laughs> okay, good. Because I, I didn't want to have to explain it. There might be some younger folk in here, and that creates problems for parents. 
Anyway, there were a couple of fast girls that I had hooked up with, and mom made sure my chore list, my mission list, was so long I didn't have much time for them. But then she would plant herself right in front of me as I was ironing pillowcases. I've never seen so many pillowcases. I, in fact, at one point, I caught her walking into the house with a bag of pillowcases. I think she was recruiting the neighbors, her special forces, to give her some, or she was buying them. But then she'd plant herself right in front of me, and she would say things like, you're going to hear people say that integrity is that thing that you do for someone when they are no longer in a position to watch you. It's what you do quietly. And then she would say, but the military teaches us about charity, too. We have clothed, loved, and fed more people in the world than any other nation on the planet. Because we don't just fight against things, we fight for things and for people. We're in that belief category, pressing against doubt, we can get to a better life together. So there was my mother with all the pillowcases in the world. And just as soon as I would iron one, she'd put another one in front of me. Oh, I think you missed a crinkle spot right where dad's going to place his head when he comes home. I'm like, really? Really? He's been sleeping in the battlefield. Do you think he needs an ironed pillowcase, mom? Oh, just keep up, Harris Kimberly. You don't want to fall behind because I've got another chore for you. She got my attention. And the kind of people that I associated with during the pillowcase ironing days of my life, understood the journey, and they became my civilian special forces. I had a different group of friends because of what mom had created in that mission. One of those messages was about integrity. I write about unleashing the power of integrity. So I go back now to what she said the saying should be, according to the military. Do things for people who can offer you nothing more than their company. That's all they have. And they will love you and appreciate you more than you can even imagine. But it isn't about any of that. It's about knowing that you lived to help a fellow man or woman at a time when they could really offer you nothing else. That is the integrity of our military. They do it every day. I'm looking out at the VFW hats and those who have served. And again, I say thank you, because you set the gold standard on that. All right. I want to get now to a couple of other rules that I hope that you'll help me get across the country as well. When things fall apart, believe you have the answer. Potential and belief are such a huge part of our lives, and I don't think we say it enough. I really don't think we say it, and we don't hear it enough. But we need to. Because what? Things fall apart sometimes. They do. Another one is own your moment. And I'm kind of getting through these quickly, because I just I love it when I look out in the audience and I see that reflection back of, oh yeah, I know what that means. You know in the military what we do? We make sure that we recognize, we celebrate with those soldiers and Marines and sailors by pinning and, and, and decorating them in such a way so that they have their moment. But it isn't just about that particular officer who served or infantryman who's done something amazing. It's also about creating space for the next one. Because when you don't appreciate the greatest among you and they don't feel appreciated, it's hard to create more space. We want more like you, so we celebrate you. We understand that the younger generations will step right up behind you and want to be like you. We decorate you because you are our inspiration. Wow. Think about all the things in life that try to be our inspiration. Stand in the grocery store line. Plenty of faces on magazines. I'm sure the Kardashians are very nice people. And Lord knows they've got great hair. I would like to stand and have to push aside the VFW, the wounded warriors, the US Army, 
the Navy. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, is that, is that a marine book back there? What is it? Ooh, these magazines are so thick. I can barely get in there. That's what I want to see at the grocery store line. Because that's true inspiration. Now, I don't want to take up too much time because I don't know if you've heard, the president is coming. Ah, <laughs> oh, the commander in chief is coming. I'm telling you, I just about had a heart attack when my team at Fox News had to tell me, Harris, the president tweeted about your book. It's about the military. And I'm like, really? No, that can't be true. And I looked and I thanked him on the air because politics aside, when the president, the commander in chief, recognizes that you are trying to lift up the military, that's a blessing. And I was grateful. And I'm thrilled to be here on the day that he is here with you because I understand the importance that the VFW plays in our daily lives. You know, I went to check into the hotel last night and I put my room key in and it said USAA. Now only those in the military know what that's about. Right? We're in a special group. We really are. And I'm so thrilled to be in this group with you. So let me tell you the rest of the story about doubt and belief. Doubt doesn't win. Belief does. I believe in all of you with all my heart as that answer when things get, get tough. When things fall apart, you are my answer because I belong to you. I'm part of your family. God bless you and thank you for having me today. And I hope you'll come out to the book signing, Nine Rules. You'll see my mom and me by my dad's fighter jet. And I would love to shake your hand personally. God bless you.